I'm Murray Elborn, the CEO of Blind Sports New South Wales. What does sport mean to me? It means everything in my life. Without sport, I wouldn't have been able to travel the world. I wouldn't have been able to achieve my goals. I wouldn't have been able to gain valuable experience in things like teamwork and communication. It's enabled me to be able to have the confidence and the empowerment to have a fulfilling career, to have achieved amazing things representing Australia and New South Wales, to be able to understand the value that sport and active recreation brings to people with low vision and blindness. Blind Sports New South Wales values the key deliverables around social recreation, active recreation and organised sport that make people more connected with their communities. Blind Sports is more than just a sporting organisation. It is a true family and gives you the ability to make friends that will last a lifetime. Hi, I'm Robbie Dunia and I'm an Australian goalball player. I was in about year three or four. Um, I went to a vision camp like that was organised by the schools and Murray and Tammy came and did a demonstration of goalball and I continued going to this camp until I was about in year six and the demonstrations kept coming and I kept falling in love with the sport each and every time. I went to, I grew up in a very small town and went to a very small primary school and that kind of thing and you know constantly having to explain, every every new person I met constantly having to explain what albinism is and why is my hair white and why can't I see um, and you know family and everything obviously got used to it as I grew up and that but to never have met anyone else who was like me and then to meet like 50 people who had albinism all at once was was a lot. <laughs> we are here today with Matt Ormston, the Executive Board Director um, of Blind Sports New South Wales. Matt, you've been a world champion cyclist, world champion surfer. What other sports have you succeeded greatly in? <laughs> um, well, like, um... As far as succeeding greatly, I've had a lot of fun in lots of sports, but for me that's the most important thing, is having fun. Um, and to me, yeah, there's nothing better than winning, to have fun, so it's good. I always find that I have more fun when I'm winning, and I think most people do. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I've played, uh, I've played rugby union, I've played ice hockey, uh, both the representative levels. About three years ago, um, I made a phone call to Blind Cricket, Cricket New South Wales, and I got on to Lindsay Heaven, who um, got us to come down and do a training session with the guys, and brought Oscar who previously played in, um, in normal cricket up until under 16s. Come down and did a training session. Um, so it just so happened that they had a national title in January, which we went to, and we won the first national title off the New South Wales, and coached for the last three years, um, the same team. We've had a couple of little players in and out, but mostly the same team. Um, yeah, so I've been playing for three years now. Um, when I started, I wasn't too good. I wasn't as, uh, as good as some of the other guys in the team, but uh, the past three years I've been working on it and uh, getting a uh, been a bit of coaching from Dad and a couple of mentors in the team like Lindsay. Um, just been getting better over the years, practicing all that, and um, yeah, got to the final and tried my best. And in the end, it was uh, the best on the day. Hi, I'm Mel. I'm a para alpine skier, and I've competed at three Paralympic Games and two World Championships. Um, and currently, I'm training in preparation for Beijing 2022, which will be my my final Paralympic Games before I retire. Where did your love for sport begin? Uh, I've always kind of loved sport. I've always been involved in sports my entire life. Um, being visually impaired since birth, my uh, I was an incredibly clumsy child. I kept falling over things and running into things as we all did and do still. Um, so my mother, um, who was also an athlete growing up, uh, decided to 
put me into sport, into gymnastics specifically, to give me a bit of a, a boost in my, my physical awareness and my proprioception. And, and I kind of just fell in love with it. I fell in love with pushing my body and kind of being able to do stuff physically. Before I even started Global, I was a very shy, very nervous child. I wouldn't really participate much in anything. Um, I preferred to stay inside and just be with people I knew and I trusted. Um, and then I used to always get involved with goalball whenever they, they had like a goal for schools program. And I really enjoyed it and um, I always wanted to come back because it was something, it was a sport designed for people who had vision impairment and that just made me feel more comfortable to be more open in my own skin, you know, um, to be to be with people who know or have been experiencing what I've gone through as well. Participating in, a something, in something like that really boosted my confidence and having people around me that I can talk to about, um, about certain things regarding my vision impairment really made being more confident and being more positive and being more confident in myself and my abilities, it, made it, it just boosted it and I was, it really shaped the person I am today. And you're looking to be a um, three-sport Australian athlete uh, with swimming and uh, football or soccer. Um, tell us about uh, the variance and how you maintain a balance between the three sports. Um, it's quite hard to be honest. Uh, swimming takes over the other two sports quite a lot with seven sessions a week. But cricket, we come every Sunday, which is good because swimming you don't have on a Sunday. But soccer, we haven't had much soccer lately due to COVID. But um, Surely it'll come back soon once all that's gone away, so be good. And Jace, uh, tell us a little bit about um, your role within Blind Cricket New South Wales and, and the Australian uh, teams that you've been a part of in the training sessions as well. What, what do you hope to be able to um, change in Blind Cricket to be able to improve even further after winning three uh, Australian NCIC championships? Yeah, for sure. Um, like, like I said, when I first came in three years ago, obviously for me it was about learning the game. Once I did learn the game and what was involved in it, I think I've, I've, one of the benefits that we've had at New South Wales is how, we, how well we play as a team. I've done a lot of fitness training with the guys that they hadn't done previously, a lot of fielding, and I think that's how we're winning a lot of our games. We're, we're a lot stronger than, than the other states in, that, in those departments. Um, so yeah, I'll just keep on top of that. I've actually introduced a bowling machine now, which I've got. Um, so we're gonna just trying something different and, and new all the time. Um, we, want to get, we want to progress, so we want to get better and better. And obviously, uh, underarm bowling in blind cricket. Tell us about the bowling machine modification over here. Yeah, so I've actually got a, it's called a, a baseball pitching machine. So it's on, it's on three legs, which I can adjust the height and, and obviously speed. Um, so we can do batting drills with it, we can do some fielding drills with it, and even some catching drills. So, um, yeah, hopefully it'll, it'll give us that little bit of edge that we need. Yep. What was the highlight of your sporting career? Okay, so t to date I'm still going, so I'm a, let's not say have what was the whole of my sporting career because my sporting career is still going. Yeah. Um, I think to date uh, my sporting career is uh, breaking the world record for four kilometres on the velodrome and as a cyclist. Um, to be the f like winning world titles stuff is great, but every, there's a world champion every year in a sport, um, whereas a world world record is something that you're the only person that's ever done that in the world. So. Michaela Kuma, an Indigenous athlete from Western Sydney who's travelled the world and achieved some really great things, but recently has gained independence through a new guide dog and is also finishing her high school certificate and has been accepted into Macquarie University to do a degree in psychology. I'm about to complete my HSC. Um, I've just gotten an early offer to Macquarie University where I'm planning to study uh, a Bachelor of Psychology. Alice came to us through her connection with the Albinism Society and we met Alice at a sports camp. From there, Alice started to play goalball and was a member of the 2017 and 2019 Youth World Championship teams where she won gold and a silver medal. Alice has gone on to have a fulfilling career, meet lots of new friends and have a real social aspect through her sport. It's my pleasure to be able to talk about Alice today and all that she's achieved. 
The Australian team has just finished their last training camp on the weekend, so they're in final preparation now to be able to defend their World Championship for the girls and the boys to be able to play for the first time in a Youth World Championship since 2013. I was one of the youngest on the team two years ago. It was a really good experience to go away and compete against so many countries. We won and oh, the feeling was just amazing. In the last 30 seconds of our gold medal game against Russia, um, every ball that came towards the girls who were on court and they'd block it and then, okay, there's only two more throws in the game kind of thing. I think there was about 10 or 15 seconds left and the scoreboard was 9-6 to us which felt amazing because Russia had mercied us uh, earlier in the tournament and they also hadn't been beaten in a youth world championship since 2011. It's over and it's blocked by eight. Number six now will take the shot across uh, closest to the camera and it goes into the arm of number two. Number two is now going to shoot with five seconds left. It bounces down. It's on the legs of number six. It's looking down for and it's over. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Australia are victorious. Sitting on the bench with my teammate and, and Murray and our coach, our, um, our coach Murray and Faith, our physio, um, and, and we were up by three points. And I just remember um, Faith turned to Murray and said, um, we just won a gold medal, coach. And that, that feeling was, I'm going to cry. <laughs> um, but that feeling was, yeah, it was amazing. And then later on in the medal ceremony, standing up there and... Um, having Brazil who, who took out the bronze and Russia who obviously took out the silver and, um, and played the, national, the, the Australian national anthem and yeah, definitely, definitely going to be hard to beat that one. <laughs> I think that is um, one of my biggest achievements in sport really um, because that was my first international game and you know we had two players that were sick and <laughs> they couldn't play and I had to play centre the whole game yep. and you know it was, I had to really step up my game and get into the mentality that I could do it and you know that was a big turning point for me um, in my sporting career. Um, it allowed me to like it, it, it gave me the realisation that I could do more than I was I thought I was capable of and so that was a really good experience. My sporting career started because my dad was having a beer with a few mates um, and they said, oh, does Maddie have any, since we don't have any, does Matt, Matt have any mates that want to play football because our kids uh, were the same age. I've got a rugby league team and they're um, down a few players, I need a few extra players. And dad said, well, Matt will play. My dad's perspective on it was I want to give him an opportunity to succeed and if, he doesn't, if it doesn't work for him, then let's take him out of there and find something else that he enjoys. But he was giving me that opportunity. So I got in that team. I think I won best and first three times in between by the time I was wow. ten and for the whole season. So I, I did well, um, but we would have we wouldn't have known that I would have done well if he just if he took that perspective. Oh, I'm putting my son with a disability in harm's way. So he gave me those opportunities. So that's where my sporting career started with Dad. Sort of saying, let's have a crack and yeah. So sport has set me up. I suppose playing playing rugby and playing ice hockey, I learn about team being, being in a team um, and learn about strengths and weaknesses. So obviously, as a visually impaired person. Playing rugby, I wasn't very good at catching the ball um, until I couldn't see it coming until the last minute, and I'd sort of let it hit my chest and then feel it, or I'd sort of see the last minute attached out of the air. So I'm never going to be the best person in the backs. Um, so I learned that I was very good in the forwards and I was very physical, so I was that, so that's where I could add value. Um, now I'm a businessman. Um, I run sustainability for Optus, which is a large, large corporate, um, and in that role, it's just it's a, bit, a lot of the stuff is about teamwork and about knowing who, who can who can add value to my team, how I can add value to them. What have you found uh, are some of the things that you've learned um, working with Matt? He, he just sort of always challenges from his perspective. He sort of brings that, um, that sort of dynamic to us. And that's really what we look for in that sort of diversity and inclusion. And if you look at the academics around this, from a business perspective, having a diverse and inclusive workforce and leadership team actually gives you better business results. So that's kind of one layer to my thinking from an Optus perspective and then kind of you, know, you, you bring that kind of dynamism that someone like Matt brings, the, uh, the, the sort of the, the results kind of speak for themselves. So he does think about how you can use technology. Uh, another example, um, we have a charity that we're part of here in Macquarie Park that uh, normally does a sort of uh, you know, a, a physical activity each year to, to generate uh, funds. 
Uh, we obviously couldn't do that through COVID. So again, we gave Matt the challenge uh, in typical Matt style. He persuaded me to lead a team uh, to do a virtual sports challenge. And of course we did that um, because uh, we also like to be winners. We had two teams. We had my team and then the actual winning team, the second office team, which of course won. <laughs> that's, a, that's a typical example of what Matt does. So there'll be a rematch down the line for sure? Uh, of course. <laughs> of course. And then with team building um, aspects um, and, and obviously the opportunity to work across that diverse space to build uh, team rapport, are there things that have um, obviously the Matt's done or have been in involved that you're looking to do in the future, like maybe um, Paralympic goalball or wheelchair rugby um, and, and getting your team and to build? Any and all of those things. We are uh, going to be attempting a world record. I might sort of steal our thunder on what, but again, Matt's organised that. Yeah. How he does his stuff, and sometimes it's beyond me, but we're going to go after the world record and kind of do that virtually as well. well. That sounds really exciting. So, I started skiing purely by accident when I was about 12. Um, I had the opportunity to go on a recreational ski camp um, and to me it was like I don't even know what skiing is but I get to this week of school so fantastic. Um, went first run down I fell in love like it was just the most freedom I think I've ever had in my entire life and that same feeling just still um, grips me every time I put a pair of skis on. After the hell that is the Australian HSC I <laughs> decided that I was going to take myself off to Canada for a season and see what this whole racing thing was all about. So I did that um, and then figured out that could be pretty fast. Um, so I took myself back again the next year and did another development year. And that was kind of like, I was introduced to the Australian head coach after that and saw some potential, uh, very, very raw potential. <laughs> but there was something that we could um, we could capture and work on so a year or two out from my first Paralympics I kind of realized that I could really make a go of ski racing and so glad I did. I think my, my journey beforehand I ended up um, I did a bunch of different jobs um, I studied um, health um, I wanted to be a, I did like I was a personal trainer uh, I was a massage therapist I ended up doing door-to-door -door sales and I've got lots of stories about falling in people's ponds because of my cane hairline. Anyway. <laughs> Um, but yeah, we won't go into that. But look, I think putting all those together, I ended up going for a job at Optus, which was an entry level job. Um, and I've worked all out through the company to now being um, fairly influential in the company and, and working with the CEO and, and um, yeah, being, being able to, to make decisions for the organisation, which, is, which has been a big opportunity for me. But I think the thing for me looking, for, looking back on my career was there's two things. So one is um, we have, as, having a disability is actually an advantage in the career. In the, in the workplace because if, if you pick the right organisation and you want to pick the right organisation because uh, it's important for them to be able to value you but it, it's a differentiation because you have a different perspective so when I'm going for a job I'm not interviewing saying oh well, I can't I can do this because of my dis because, despite my disability I'm saying I can do this because of my disability like I can listen better I had a, I had a 20 year basically degree in sales because I went through high school in a mainstream school and I couldn't read so I just listened and asked, asked questions. And that's what the most important thing in sales is, is being able to listen to what the customer needs and ask them questions to be able to probe them to really under, under define what's, what, they, what, they, what they're looking for in a product or what they're looking for in a solution and then being able to, to, to feed back to them how your product fits into that. So um, for me that was like no one, no one decided has that. They didn't go through school asking questions. They didn't go through school not being able to read. So um, I've got an advantage over a lot of people in the workspace because of that. So if you look back at yourself and go, what's my, like maybe I had some challenges, but those challenges actually gave me opportunities. And being able to articulate that to an employer is so important. I basically followed my, my love of sport into a, into a career in, in sports and sport um, science at university and then I followed that into a master's of sports science and biomechanical analysis of, of movement um, and I love that analytical way to look at, at human movement because the way that the human body can move and is capable of moving is profound um, and it's fascinating to no end. It, it's still it still awes and shocks me on a daily basis. So, you know, taking that 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 love of analysis and, and you know, finding optimal way for, ways for people to move and to, into the healthcare field was something that just seemed like a natural fit. So, um, went and did another couple of degrees, got my physiotherapy qualifications, and I've been working in the field since 2018. 
I want to work with national teams. I want to work with Paralympic teams. Um, I believe being a, a high level winter athlete that I'll be able to fit in quite well as a, a winter um, physio provider. So I want to be able to do that. Um, to do that, I need to do another master's degree. Um, so. <laughs> just add them to the list. <laughs> yeah, just, you know, just piling up the list there. Um, so I definitely want to take my physiotherapy degree a lot further and to really kind of give back to athletes of all ages. Um, I love working with athletes. I think they're just so driven and I love the way that they're always trying to find a way to better their body and better themselves. And they're striving for that that next level of performance and they're always looking for ways to do that. That's what I love about working with athletes. And tell me about that father-son bond in working with each other out there. Is, is it help? Is it uh, more pressure? Um, for you guys, how, how does it work, Oscar? Um, it's kind of good to be honest because he knows my game. So most of the time, he kind of doesn't really have to say too much because he knows that I know what I'm doing most of the time. Hard uh, taskmaster at home, mate? Nah, nah, it's pretty, <laughs> it's pretty easy. It's pretty good at home, but nah, it's good. And how about for you, Jace, coaching your son? Um, how, how's that for you? Yeah, look, it is hard um, because, as most people would know, kids don't listen to their parents as much as anyone else. So. Um, I try and use other people in the team as well that I might hint a few things that need to be done so then it might come from someone else. Uh, it's quite funny sometimes I'll, I'll hear someone say something to Oscar and he'll go, yeah right, he'll do it and it's exactly what I've told him previously but you know what I mean, it's coming from someone else which is fine. And um, we get on very well so we spend a lot of time together so it's good. Well you've been both great for New South Wales and um, thanks for spending some time with us. Thanks Murray. For you. I think sport was... I don't, sport has just meant everything to me, I think. Um, I've built my life around sport. I It, it taught me so much about um, what my body was capable of and what I was capable of and the fact that, um, that I was able to find ways around not being able to do things or you know, there was there was certain challenges um, that I faced in gymnastics and, and other sports, and it made me um, search outside the box to find solutions. Definitely take some risks and, and push, like set your goals a lot higher than what you think you can do, because I guarantee you can get there. And even if you like, say, let's say you're aiming for a number three in your goal, but you could really get to a number five. Um, let's go. Let's go for number seven. And then if you only land at number five, you still still do better than three rather than going for three. If that makes sense. So that's what I'd say. As far as risks going, like take, push it really hard and see what you can achieve. Because I bet you can do what, more than what you think you can. When you came to us, and I remember the first time you came, um, you know, pretty shy boy, didn't say much. Um, but uh, but now look at you. <laughs> Um, Is that a compliment? Yeah, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> but um, you know, it's a big difference, right? And you've been able to make some really good lifelong friends, and really, um, you know, it's impacted your life in different ways, right? Yeah, of course. When I, you said it before, I was really shy. I used to go to all the sports with a hoodie right over my face, so no one really even saw me. But it, it probably took about a year, not even. And then a lot of people at goalball, a lot of people at cricket, brought me out of my shell. And then I started to play sport a lot more, a lot, uh, more competitively. I started to get a bit better, and it really put up my confidence. Now that's the message, isn't it? It's, it doesn't matter what you want to play. There's something for everybody. And now you're playing tennis, and you're a three-time Australian athlete, um, which you should be really proud of. And um, and that opportunity is there for people. So it doesn't matter if you want to play cricket or tennis or golf or um, goalball or whatever you want to play, there's something out there in adaptive sport for you and um, it, it's just not all about the sport, it's about meeting new friends and, and having new experiences um, and enjoying it, isn't it? It's all about fun. Definitely. Uh, when I first came into it, it was mainly uh, cricket and goalball. Yep. Now tennis, uh, golf has come up a lot more, yep. more sports coming in, soccer, AFL, of course, basketball. Yeah, AFL. It's, it's just awesome. It's just, there's so many ways to adapt sport and for me especially watching people on TV it's I want to be like them yep. and now with all these adaptive sports we can be. Um, Hayden you've been playing for nearly a year now right two years? Yes I started in like 2018. Okay and what, what made you um, and dad come to cricket for the first time? Uh, well I was watching YouTube videos of um, the grand finals and I thought that'd be interesting for me so I wanted to join in as well. 
And how have you found cricket so far? I've loved it. Yeah, what aspect do you like most about it? I like the batting. The, yeah, the being able to down. smash that ball, huh? Yeah. Everyone loves that. Well, it's good, it's good. It's good to get Hayden out and out and about, you know. He loves listening to it on the, on the radio and stuff. He follows all the games and that, that the um, professionals play. And it's good to get him involved. He loves playing at school. He plays at a school now at, um, at sport. So he's getting them involved as well. So it's, yeah, it's good. It's good. It's good attitude and everything. We're here at Tamworth Golf Club today, and this is part of our, um, I guess, weekend where we're coming to Tamworth as Blind Sports in South Wales, and we're doing four sports, including golf, tennis, goal ball, which we did yesterday, and cricket. And it's in a follow-up to delivering these show bags to over a thousand students with low vision and blindness. And so part of what we want to do in a follow-up is to be able to make sure that regional communities in New South Wales are sustainable and that kids and adults with low vision and blindness have the opportunity to be able to have a sustainable program in their own community, run by their own community, as part of our NDIS ILC program. Have you hit a golf ball before? No. Okay. What you need to do... No, no, the other way. That foot. Same with the part as your shoulder. That's better, yep. Now how did your journey in blind golf start? Uh, well actually, before I lost my sight, I knew blind golf existed because I was playing at Chatswood Golf Club where there was a lady who played blind golf. And I always thought when I had a little bit more time that I would become a caddy myself. But weirdly, I lost my sight and became a blind golfer instead. So I was already a golfer yep. and now I am a blind golfer question what's yep. your advice to uh, individuals who uh, have blindness or low vision and are wanting to get into golf I think it's a great sport you, the caddy acts as your eyes and even if you want to learn I've come across so many of the golfers that are new that have learned to play golf with the help of a pro teaching them it's all about people being involved it's not about the elite or the pathway cricketers We've got some very good cricketers. I think we boast nine or ten out of a current squad of 30 Australian players are all from New South Wales. Um, so that's fantastic, but we want young kids coming. We want people coming back to play the game. Um, we've recently had inquiries from a number of players that have played some years ago and are interested in coming back. Um, it's now local and easy for them to get to. We want to make Blind Cricket New South Wales accessible to the whole of the blind community. Um, we now field two teams, um, Sixers and Thunder, and that comes with great support from Cricket New South Wales, who have, uh, with the new CEA, Lee Jamon, have backed us to the hilt, both at pathway level and club level. We have an annual game against Cricket New South Wales, um, which showcases our game to the wider cricket community. And I think it's all about getting the message out there that it's not just elite cricketers, it's for everybody. We're talking to Stefan Nero. Stefan's just moved from Western Australia to New South Wales and Stefan's represented Australia in blind cricket and also blind soccer or blind football. Steph, uh, we're at the Bankstown Indoor Centre. How have you um, adapted to um, the blind sports environment in New South Wales? Uh, it's been great actually, yeah, um, everything's kind of organised, uh, kind of which is really good. You know, you have people that are, you know, obviously in their roles organising everything day to day. Um, so for myself, which is, you know, very different in every way, I can kind of show up and take part, which is um, really positive for me. It's all about good people wanting to help others and we've got a great bunch of people who want to help and basically they're parents of players or uh, retired players that have come back and they want to give back to the game. You've got guys like um, Graham Fulton, Troy King, um, you know Jason Stubbs, our new coach. Jason's new to blind sports 
His son Oscar's a very good cricketer. Um, and Jason puts in a lot of time. It's all about making the product what people want to play. It's no good standing in the sun for five hours on a Saturday and nobody gets a go. We try and make sure that everybody's involved every game we play. You're a coach uh, for uh, vision impaired tennis. It has to be quite a varied job too, because you, you say you've got 10 guys and four girls and they're all vision impaired, but they would all be across the whole spectrum, B1 to B4, and different vision impairments as well. You, going into this, you go from you know blind, you can't see, to realizing, oh, that means a hundred different things. Yeah, yeah, it definitely, you've got to adapt so much. Um, and the best way, to adapt and provide the best coaching is to communicate with your players. Because I don't know what it feels like to be in their body um, and to see through their vision. Um, and so communicating, getting them to describe to me, you know, when you on the serving action, if you throw that ball up in the air, you know, when do you lose track of that ball? Do you then have to draw, uh, throw a shorter ball or a higher ball? Mm -hmm. And then you're throwing a shorter ball. I know the technique you've got to do in order to get that ball in. You know, player might not know that, but the player knows, okay, I can, you know, see the ball and, you know, I'm able to see it there. So I'm going to use that, listen to my coach. So you kind of work together as a team. Um, but like I said, you really have have to make adjustments with how you coach your players and especially if their abilities vary it's not that you know black and white it's not the one same rule for everyone which is quite cool a lot of the players that we have you know they have the option whether they want to come to tennis or not and they choose to come to tennis um, and not just to compete, you know, on the league, on the pro tour or at these events, but it's to socialise. They, they've created such amazing friendships uh, between each other and I'm really happy to be a part of it. So some of them apparently knew each other before joining tennis. There was, did you find that there was any like weird social barriers or it was like the almost felt clicky or was it just open from the start? It was open from the start. Um, you had those relationships friendships that were really close and then you'd have a couple of new people come in because tennis has been you know growing the interest in the sport and you get a few new people in but you know these guys understand uh, what it feels like to be you know excluded or haven't had those opportunities and to come into a new group and so they're super friendly right from the get-go you know whenever the new person's hit a really good shot they're like yeah well done good stuff um, and they're really welcoming um, they understand i guess how important the sense of belonging is for, for a person And what would you say for young kids who are in school right now, Steph, and, you know, thinking, well, I don't, I'm not really sporty or I might not be good at sport, what do you, what do you tell them um, about getting involved and taking that first step? It's just to try it. Just come down, come for the first session, um, and if you don't like it, then, you know, obviously try something else. Um, for me, blind sports has been instrumental in my life and I would really know all these people or be involved in everything I do without blind sports. So, you know, um, if you're sitting there thinking about trying, uh, trying blind sports, just try it out. You know, there's so many different things available. They don't let preconceived notions of what someone's told you you can or can't do or what you perceive that you can't do is your finite existence. If you see something out there that you want to try or you think sounds fun, even in an abstract way, go and try it. Question, ask questions, find a way that you can give it a go because you never know how it's going to change your life. You really don't. And you're not going to know unless you actually go and ask those questions. So if anyone like sees an activity where they think that might be fun, whether it be skiing or whether it be cliff diving, I, I, I don't know, you pick. Um, <laughs> uh, ask a question, uh, find out if there's a way that you can get it done, and there's a way that you can try it. Um, like I've always wanted to try scuba diving, but with my vision and, and all that, I never thought it would be a possibility until I went and asked the question and I got to scuba dive. It may be the only time in my life that I got to do it, but you have to ask the question. I'll ski for the rest of my life, and that that love of skiing in the mountains will take me all over the world. In surfing, I can now pretty much go to Hawaii, go to the US. I can travel most places in the world, and I, can, I know a surfer there who's decided who can take me out surfing, which is pretty awesome. I have pulled lifelong friends from all over the world because of both of those.
of sports and I'll never stop moving, I'll never stop um, being involved in some form of physical activity, whether it be recreational or competition. It doesn't, I can't foresee a world in which I will not do something. You can find more information about Blind Sports New South Wales and the affiliate sports on our website, www.blindsportsnsw.com.au. <laughs> Let's talk about your new son. <laughs> <laughs> South Wines from South Wales, Stephen here, here, your boy. We have Sonia Ballick here, oh, she's running away from me. I don't know. South Wines, this is Sean Brown. I've had one sub to race. Because and he's like, I'm going to take this lecture. And then I'm going to take this lecture. And then I'm going to take this lecture. Murray's like, now Sonia's going to kill you. Sonia's like, oh, I'll do it. No problem. How's that? How's that? This is like Game of Thrones. This is like Game of Thrones. I don't know. This is like Game of Thrones. This is it. This is down a mustard. This would be the best thing to my confidence. And give me it. Right the foot. It's a big... That'll go great in the documentary, guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>